Hi there, this is Phil with PhilFX and a new tutorial here. Uh, I'm going to do, this is part one of a three part series on how to uh, block out and animate uh, the classic bouncing ball using uh, Toon Boom Harmony Advanced. Uh, I'm currently using uh, the newest version, version 17. And I'm doing this for my uh, Art 184 and actually Art 284 uh, classes that are being taught at Phoenix College. Uh, so let's get started here. So I've created uh, just a uh, generic bouncing ball. I put some stripes on it, so if we do some rotation with it, uh, we can uh, uh, demonstrate that. And uh, I have already set it up so that my uh, uh, pivot is in the center, which is what you want to do. I've got a tutorial on that on YouTube that I put in on how to create a drawing object and place that pivot so it's in the center. And uh, so the first thing I want to do in terms of animating is you want to block things out. And uh, it's very common for animators when they block things out that they want to use, uh, well, it depends on the application. Uh, actually, if we look at... Uh, uh, Toon Boom Harmony, they call it stop motion keyframe. If you're using Maya, it's called hold keyframes. Uh, they have different names, but basically what these are is these are holding keyframes where you set a key and there is no movement until the next keyframe. And so things tend to pop, but it allows you to do some blocking and set your baseline of how things look. And uh, so I'm going to set this up and we have stop motion keyframe enabled. So when I set keys in, uh, they will all be stop motion and I uh, want to go in and set my first key so let's set our first key and the way every animation should begin is you really want to look at a reference video and so I have a reference video that basically is an animation that I've done using Maya and uh, I don't have uh, photographs out there or videos of bouncing balls uh, there are plenty of those uh, on uh, YouTube and on Vimeo and other places on the web. Obviously it would not be proper for me to include those and then uh, call that my work. So I have my bouncing ball and uh, I've currently uploaded this to a uh, uh, very unique application that's on the web called Sync Sketch and I'll, I'll have a, a bonus video on how to do analysis and I'll talk more about Sync Sketch, but right now I'm just going to use this to analyze my uh, bouncing ball. So let's take a look at the bouncing ball that I have. So here, my ball is bouncing, and it comes out and rolls to an end. And if we look at this, uh, it's also very good, very often, to uh, flip an animation and view it from the other way. And for the most part, this isn't too bad. There's a couple of things I can see that uh, I'm certainly, I could have done a little bit better. But uh, this animation uh, is clearly just a blocking animation, although I have ease in and ease out. Uh, but I have uh, no squash and stretch that's been added. You can see that uh, there is some rotation on the ball. So let's take a look and analyze this as it goes across. So we start out here at frame one. And uh, this animation is, in fact, at 24 frames per second. And so what you want to do when you're looking at a reference video is you want to find, what's most important is you want to find out when is the ball at the bottom and when is it at its peak and what are the differences in the heights as it bounces, or bounces through. Okay, the peak is going to be dependent upon what type of ball. Uh, and how much energy was initially it was put into the system. In other words, how high was it dropped from? Uh, this is pretty typical for a basketball. That's what this animation was based on. Uh, a bowling ball uh, in the physical real world, assuming no uh, wind resistance, a, a basketball is going to drop at the same speed as a bowling ball, as a baseball, and a golf ball, and a ping pong ball. Uh, Wind resistance does come into play though, and as animators, we always like to use exaggeration. So if this was a bowling ball, you would probably show it dropping a little bit faster, and at the height of its bounces would be less, and it would dampen out and deaden and start to roll a lot quicker. So we start here at uh, keyframe one, and I have a height right here, and I'm gonna turn onion skinning on. 
and I've got it set for uh, eight frames. <clears throat> so let's see where this comes down. And oops, let me flip this back this way. Yeah, so can we come down? So right at frame 12, all right, is where I hit. So I'm just going to put a mark there so we can see frame 12 is where it hits. And then we come up, and I peak right about there. So 21 is where I peak. And then we come back down, and I hit again at frame 29. And my next peak is right here at frame 36. We come down and we hit at frame 43. Frame 49 is my next one. Frame 55. You can see, looking at the spacing between these keyframes, as time goes on and the ball loses energy, the time between bounces gets less and less and less. This is the way a real ball is going to bounce. The other thing you should note is obviously the height of the ball varies. Okay, So as the ball loses energy, uh, the height doesn't come as high. So we're coming down here, 64. Looks like 68. It's 72. Okay, I think for what I want to do with uh, Harmony, uh, this is plenty of cycles we can view. All right, so we start up here at frame one, and we've set a keyframe, and my next keyframe is here at frame 12. Uh, before I start doing this, one thing I want to make sure also is I've double clicked on block and I'm looking at the layer properties, and I'm going to use separate positions, not a 3D path. And I'll explain that later when uh, uh, in uh, part two and part three with the differences between those two. But uh, we're going to set this up with separate. So I said, let's see, where do we go? Well, the next one was we go to frame 12. So we're kind of going to come down here to frame 12. And at frame 12, the ball is going to be down. All right. So that's our first keyframe. And then the next one is at frame 21. It comes back up. And so we'll go out here to frame 21. Now, to be technically correct, what I actually really would want is I'd want some kind of a line that would show the peak and how the fall off is. And with Harmony, you could actually do that quite simple. You could create a drawing layer and give yourself kind of a reference line for how the height varies as the ball drops off. I'm just going to kind of ballpark this and guess it and eyeball it for myself. Uh, again, this is something we can adjust. This is the whole purpose of blocking. So we got frame 21. And then I come down here to frame 29. So I go to frame 29. And we bring this down. And my next key frame is at frame 36. So we go out here to frame 36 and I bring it up. And we go to frame 43. And I come down. And 49, I go up again. Fifty five, I'm down. And I think the next one's off the scale for what we're doing. No, frame sixty. So frame sixty is the last one. <laughs> So I'll take this all the way out to frame 60, and we'll come up like that. 
So let's go ahead and play this. Let's loop this. And you can see what this does for you, okay? So when you play this through, it gives you just an initial blocking and you should be able to make a judgment as to is that uh, what you're looking for or is it not? Do you have things spaced or jumped too far apart? I think right now for a first pass that looks pretty good. Uh, and so I will leave this and then we will uh, start part two. And part two is where we're going to take and uh, I will animate this out using uh, separate keyframes as opposed to for position as opposed to using 3D path. So this has been Phil with PhilFX and I'll see you guys in part two.